I am greatly honored to have been invited to deliver this lecture, but I prefer to call it a talk because that's what I'm going to do, is just talk about Mandela and Tambo, friends, comrades, leaders, and their legacy as an inspiration for future generations. I want to tell you about my experience of these two people, who are really great, and they were also my friends and comrades and leaders, and it's my one attempt at literary speech-making, leaders of such caliber that we were prepared to follow them to the ends of the earth and beyond. But Brian, that this terrorist should now be this icon that we honor in this way, it's very nice, but sometimes it's painful, you know, because, because he was so reviled and we were reviled for fighting against this awful oppression and denial of human dignity of racism by law and now people forget. They think that freedom just falls from the trees and Nelson Mandela alone brought freedom. In passing sentence, the judge said that the death penalty was the appropriate sentence, but he would show the only lenience he could and we started to smile, Nelson too. And when he said the sentence was life in prison, we laughed out loud. It was a great moment in our lives but imagine what sort of a country, what sort of a loss we would have suffered if Nelson Mandela and Walter Sisula and the others in that trial had been sentenced to death and had the executions taken place. At a personal level, I have to report I'm quite pleased I'm able to be here tonight. <laughs> in the meantime, Oliver Tambo, had exhausted himself physically. He'd had one stroke after the other, and then he suddenly had a tremendous stroke and was laid low. He was taken to Sweden to recuperate. He was treated there. And then Nelson Mandela was released and went to visit OR in Sweden where he was recuperating. When he arrived, it was quite remarkable because there was a queue of thousands of people waiting to greet Nelson Mandela. And suddenly he's standing in front of me and he looks at me and he says, it's a long time since we've seen each other, boy. <laughs> well, he was 15 years old and I was the youngest, so I was boy. And off we go to the presidential palace where Nelson was to stay and to meet with OR. And when they met each other, after 30 years of separation. You can't believe the joy. They glowed, and O.R., who was exhausted from all the years and ill, was absolutely glowing. He was up on his feet, he was talking, he was chattering. And at some point around that time, when he handed over the presidency of the ANC to Nelson Mandela, he said something like, I have done my best to nurture the ANC and to protect it. I now hand it back bigger and stronger than ever. Chris Harney, one of our great leaders, was assassinated. Oliver Tambo flew from Britain to South Africa to attend the funeral. It was too much for him and he died shortly after and before liberation. Nelson Mandela was given a second concert at Wembley. We didn't know he was going to be free and suddenly he's on stage there and he made a speech. He made a speech in praise of Oliver Tambo. A well-deserved praise. But there was no sense of I'm bigger than you or you're bigger than me. This was two comrades brothers, brothers in arms. I wish our politicians, yours and ours, could have the sense of a destiny, of freedom that overrides the personal. I 
I'm going to stop there to say that for me, the biggest difference between living under apartheid and living in my new South Africa, our new South Africa, Madam Deputy High Commissioner, is that we have the problems. We have terrible issues to resolve, but we debate them, we argue them, we protest, and we don't all end up in prison. That's because we're a democracy. It's very nice to be part of it. Thank you for listening to me.